The 1987 season begins in spectacular fashion on Labor Day, the Great American Football Celebration, the first night game ever at Spartan Stadium. Pre-game festivities include the Great State Tailgate, a sellout crowd, national television audience, and a rousing halftime show that features a 150-foot flag and a fireworks display. MSU scores a touchdown on its first drive of the season. All-American Lorenzo White rips off a run of 31 yards to set up the TD, then takes it in himself from nine yards out. He finishes the night with 111 yards on 22 carries and two touchdowns. Quarterback Bobby McAllister keeps the Trojans off balance with timely passing and elusive running. The Pompano Beach, Florida junior connects on 10 of 15 passes for 103 yards. The big one was a 44-yard bomb to split in Andre Risen. Lorenzo takes it in on the next play, giving MSU an insurmountable 24-6 lead. MSU's defense forces Southern Cal into five turnovers in the second half. On the second play after the kickoff, USC quarterback Rodney Pete fumbles the snap and defensive end John Buddy pounces on the loose ball. Three plays later, McAllister takes it in. Senior defensive tackle Mark Nichols kills off one USC scoring threat when he recovers a fumble deep in MSU territory, while safety Todd Crum spoils another when he picks off a pass in the end zone. All-America punter Greg Montgomery booms one for 65 yards to pull the Spartans out of trouble. New place kicker John Langlow connects on a pair of three-pointers including one from 43 yards out that caps the 27-13 victory. In South Bend, Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown returns two of Montgomery's punts for touchdowns of 71 and 66 yards in the first quarter, and the Irish are off and running to a 31-8 victory. MSU's lone bright spot comes late in the game when McAllister hits Risen for a 57-yard touchdown that spoils Notre Dame's hopes for a shutout. The Florida State Seminoles, who would finish the season number two in the country, overpower MSU in handing the Spartans their second straight defeat. One high note for the Spartans was the running of tailback Blake Ezor. The sophomore from Las Vegas, Nevada, leads all MSU ball carriers with 92 yards on 17 carries. The season turns around for Michigan State when the Spartans open their Big Ten schedule at Iowa. But it takes a stinging halftime talk from head coach George Perlis after MSU fell behind 14-7 to shake the doldrums. Lorenzo White carries the ball 39 times for 166 yards and one touchdown. The TD is a Lorenzo trademark as he vaults himself over the top into the end zone. John Langlow starts MSU's comeback effort in the second half when he connects on a pair of third quarter field goals, including one from 46 yards, bringing the Spartans back within a point. MSU's defense made life miserable for Hawkeye ball carriers all afternoon, limiting Iowa to a minus 16 yards rushing. The Spartans record four quarterback sacks on the day. Linebacker Tim Moore sends Hawkeye quarterback Dan McGuire to the sidelines. Iowa's Chuck Hartley meets linebacker Kurt Larson late in the game, dashing the Hawkeyes' hopes for a comeback. Andre Risen turns in a key play when he returns an Iowa punt 22 yards midway through the fourth quarter. Harlan Barnett's block springs Risen loose and puts the Spartans in position to score the winning touchdown. Bobby McAllister completes two of ten passes, but he connects when it counts most, hitting tight end Mike Sargent for an eight-yard touchdown pass that gives MSU a 19-14 victory and their first win in a Big Ten season opener in eight years. It was gang green at Spartan Stadium as MSU upsets arch-rival Michigan 17-11. The MSU defense turns back the Wolverines at every opportunity. The Spartans hold Michigan to a net yardage of just 93 yards rushing. Wolverine quarterback Demetrius Brown runs for his life all afternoon. Defensive end John Buddy nails Brown for a negative 16 yards. Another Saccharino has tackled Travis Davis almost nets an MSU safety. Spartan defensive backs had a field day against Brown, picking off seven of his passes. Safety John Miller grabs four, setting a new Michigan State record. But a Harlan Barnett interception kills off a Michigan drive for what the Wolverines hoped would be a last-minute game-winning touchdown. Lorenzo White rushes for 185 yards on 34 carries, scoring both MSU touchdowns. The Spartans' all-time leading ground gainer breaks Michigan's back in the first half 
with 142 yards while ripping off large chunks of real estate like a 47-yard scamper in the second quarter. The touchdowns are vintage Lorenzo. On the first one, he carries a U of M defender into the end zone. Then just before the half, the senior from Fort Lauderdale gives the Spartans a 14-3 lead by breaking a tackle and diving over the goal line. Bobby McAllister completes only five passes, but they came at just the right time to sustain MSU scoring drives. Flanker Willie Boyer hauls in one for 21 yards before he gets drilled by a Wolverine defender, but he holds on to the ball. John Langlow provides MSU with its final points when he drills a 44-yard field goal midway through the fourth quarter. Safety Todd Crum nails down MSU's first victory over Michigan in Spartan Stadium since 1969. At Evanston, Lorenzo White spearheads the attack, carrying 33 times for 187 yards and three touchdowns. The Spartan ground game rolls up 362 yards against the outman Northwestern defense. McAllister and Ryzen team up five times for all 96 yards MSU gains through the air. The pair get six points on a seven-yard touchdown pass late in the third quarter. The best defense in the Big Ten holds Northwestern to only 51 yards rushing while recording three more quarterback sacks. A homecoming crowd of more than 76,000 rain-drenched fans watch MSU and Illinois battle to a 14-14 tie. MSU keeps the ball on the ground much of the day. McAllister picks up 32 yards on the quarterback draw. Later, the Spartan quarterback gains 34 yards on a keeper when he's unable to find an open receiver. McAllister scores the tying touchdown on a rollout with just under five minutes left in the game. Once again, the MSU defense holds its opponent to under 100 yards rushing. The Illini net just 53 yards. Tim Moore stops Illinois ball carriers in their tracks throughout the game and also records a pair of quarterback sacks. The Spartans use their passing game sparingly because of the inclement weather, but they're able to cross up the Illini defense with a pass from Blake Ezor to Lorenzo White out of the wishbone formation, good for 24 yards. In the waning seconds of the game, Todd Crum picks off a deflected pass and returns it to the Illinois 15-yard line. But John Langlow's 28-yard field goal attempt is blocked on the last play of the game. In Columbus, the Spartans take over sole possession of first place in the Big Ten with a stunning 13-7 upset of Ohio State. After giving up a 79-yard touchdown pass on the game's first play, MSU holds the Buckeyes to just 68 yards in total offense and two yards rushing. The Spartans chase down Ohio State's quarterbacks throughout the game, recording seven sacks. Travis Davis from Warren, Ohio, accounts for five of them, turning in the best game of his MSU career. Led by another Ohio native, linebacker Percy Snow, and defensive tackle Mark Nichols, the Spartans neutralize the vaunted Buckeye ground game. Bobby McAllister leads MSU in rushing with 83 yards, most of them coming when he scrambles away from the pursuit of Ohio State defenders. A patented McAllister scramble gives MSU its only touchdown. From the Ohio State 15-yard line, he first looks to pass, then eludes a strong rush and twists and turns his way into the end zone. MSU's opportunistic defense strikes again. An interception by Todd Crum sets up a 40-yard field goal by John Langlow, giving the Spartans the lead. Kurt Larson picks off another Ohio State pass to put MSU in position for Langlow's second field goal from 20 yards out giving the Spartans their margin of victory. Michigan State's first win over the Buckeyes since 1974. The Spartan Express rolls on with a convincing victory over the Purdue Boilermakers, setting up a Rose Bowl showdown with Indiana. MSU piles up 542 yards in total offense, including 416 on the ground, both season highs for the Spartans. Blake Ezor paces the rushing attack with a career best 151 yards on 22 carries. The sophomore speedster from Las Vegas also scores one touchdown. Lorenzo White adds another 145 yards on 25 carries to go over the 1,000 yard mark for the second time in his career. Bobby McAllister has a good game both on the ground and in the air. 
The slippery signal caller leaves Purdue clutching nothing but air as he loots a strong Boilermaker rush and takes off up the middle for 51 yards. McAllister gets the six points himself two plays later on the option, going around left end for the score. The redshirt junior from Florida hooks up with split end Andre Risen for a pair of touchdowns. Risen finishes the day with five catches for 122 yards. He gathers in a 33-yard touchdown pass from McAllister just before stepping out of the end zone. With second-year linebacker Percy Snow leading the charge, Gang Green holds Purdue to a minus 18 yards rushing. The second time the Spartans have held the opposition to a negative rushing total. The MSU secondary intercepts three passes as the Boilermakers are forced to throw on nearly every play. Tim Moore picks one off at the Purdue 29 and appears headed for a touchdown before losing his footing. Everything comes up roses for Michigan State as they overwhelm Indiana 27-3 before more than 76,000 delirious fans at Spartan Stadium to win the Big Ten Championship and their first trip to the Rose Bowl since 1966. Lorenzo White has the best game of his career, carrying the ball at MSU record 56 times for 292 yards and two touchdowns. Behind an offensive line anchored by junior tackle Tony Manderich, Lorenzo finds gaping holes in the Hoosier defense. A 21-yard scamper helps set up the first of his two touchdowns, a five-yard burst on the first play of the second quarter. Bobby McAllister turns in a near-flawless performance directing the Spartan attack. The redshirt junior connects on all five of his passes for 67 yards and one touchdown, a perfectly thrown 22-yard aerial to Andre Risen, giving MSU a 14-3 lead. Risen shows a national television audience why he's one of the best receivers in the country as he pulls down a McAllister pass with one hand for a pickup of 19 yards. The Spartans get a good indication this is their day when John Langlow's spectacular 47-yard field goal try late in the second quarter hits the crossbar and bounces over to give State a 17-3 halftime advantage. MSU's defense keeps the pressure on Indiana quarterback Dave Cramey throughout the half as Mark Nichols nails him for a 14-yard loss. Cramey again finds nowhere to turn and is smothered by John Buddy and Travis Davis forcing a fumble that's recovered by linebacker Kurt Larson. The Spartans waste no time in turning the heat on Indiana in the second half as Blake Ezor gathers in the kickoff, breaks free down the sideline, kicks on the afterburners, and races 90 yards before he's caught from behind at the Indiana eight-yard line. MSU settles for a field goal, but on the next possession, the Spartans virtually ice the game thanks to a great individual effort by McAllister. He keeps the ball on a rollout, breaks tackles, twists, and turns, and is finally brought down on the Indiana one-yard line. Lorenzo takes it in for a second TD of the game, and the MSU defense takes over to preserve the victory. With Indiana throwing on every down, safeties John Miller and Todd Crum pick off two of Cramey's passes. Crum's is his second of the game and ninth of the year to set a new Michigan State single season record. The Spartans run out the clock and touch off a wild celebration not seen in East Lansing in 22 years. In the locker room, a jubilant head coach George Perlis proudly accepts the Big Ten Championship trophy before surprised MSU players are congratulated by Indiana coach Bill Mallory. By God, I commend you, and we have a lot of respect for you. You're a damn fine football team, and congratulations on winning the title. I'm just going to say this. By God, go out to the coast and kick their ass because we're all damn tired. Yeah! Yeah! Ten champions tuned up for the Rose Bowl by turning back Wisconsin in the regular season finale on the Badgers' home turf. Lorenzo White plays only the first half, 
but still manages to roll up 92 yards on 19 carries and two touchdowns. The TDs give Lorenzo 14 for the season and a record 41 for his MSU career. Blake Ezor leads the rushing attack with 148 yards on 28 carries, picking up six points on a nine-yard run late in the third quarter. Bobby McAllister and his favorite receiver Andre Risen are tough on the Badgers all afternoon, hooking up six times for 162 yards, including this 50-yard bomb in the second quarter. McAllister finishes the day with 10 completions and 12 attempts for 211 yards. The Spartans close out their regular season unbeaten in the Big Ten and head to Pasadena for a rematch with Pac-10 champion Southern California. Defensive tackle, Travis Davis. Free safety, Todd Crum. Offensive tackle, Tony Manderich. Strong safety, John Miller. Punter, Greg Montgomery. Linebacker, Tim Moore. Defensive tackle, Mark Nichols. Split in, Andre Risen. Center, Pat Shermer. Linebacker, Percy Stowe. Back, Lorenzo White. Head 
head coach, George Perlis. When I had that opportunity and I wanted to stay at Michigan State, just like I said, this is the job for me. I love it here. I'm staying here and I wasn't influenced by any perks or anything Michigan State gave me. I had the opportunity and couldn't do it. It had been 22 years, and Michigan State fans were ready. Go Green! Go White! Go Green! Go White! <laughs> More than 4,500 people joined the MSU Alumni Association Tour, the largest official Big Ten Rose Bowl contingent in history. For the team, it was business as usual when it came to practice. But there were plenty of special events as well, such as a day at Disneyland. <laughs> Hundreds of fans lined the streets of Main Street, USA to watch the Spartan marching band. More than 8,000 people attended the MSU Alumni Association pep rally at the Century Plaza Ballroom, featuring George Perlis and L.A. Laker basketball superstar, Urban Magic Johnson. I wish I could put this enthusiasm, I wish I could put this in a bottle and say it. You know, when you go to Michigan State, you get a great education and you get great athletics. So, let's show everybody from USC, the world, how we party at Michigan State. New Year's Day, game day, started with the annual Tournament of Roses Parade. Over a million people and an international TV audience watched as MSU cheerleaders and the Spartan Marching Band traveled Pasadena's Colorado Boulevard, led by Chief Banner Holder and former MSU President Walter Adams. Uh, we just look forward to a very successful day when the team shows what it has to offer. There was a definite green and white flavor in the crowd of more than 100,000 as Michigan State makes its first appearance in the Rose Bowl since 1966. Trailing three to nothing in the first quarter, the Spartans put together a drive that would set the tone for the first half. A key play comes on a third and four as Bobby McAllister scrambles for 17 yards and a first down. All-America Lorenzo White carries 10 times on the 15-play drive and gets the last five yards for a touchdown when he outraces USC defenders to the end zone. Lightning strikes for MSU in the second quarter when McAllister hooks up with split-end Andre Risen for the bomb. The junior from Flint makes a spectacular over-the-shoulder catch for 55 yards and a first and goal on the Southern Cal seven-yard line. Two plays later, Lorenzo takes it through a gaping hole on the left side, and the Spartans open up a 14-3 halftime lead. Although the yards were a little harder to come by in the second half, Lorenzo finishes the game with 113 yards on 35 carries. The MSU defense keeps Southern Cal from getting its offense on track in the first half. Safety John Miller picks off a Rodney Pete pass to stop one USC drive, while linebacker Kurt Larson steps in front of another Pete Ariel to spoil another Trojan scoring threat. The Southern Cal quarterback feels constant pressure from Gang Green throughout the game. Joe Bergen gets in on the fun, sacking Pete for a loss of six. Punter Greg Montgomery keeps the Spartans out of trouble with another of his 60-yard boomers. Turnovers are a factor throughout the game as MSU keeps its slate clean while Southern Cal commits five. In the second half, Joe Bergen intercepts a pass on a botched field goal attempt. The Spartans use the passing game sparingly, preferring a ball control offense. Bobby McAllister completes four of seven passes on the afternoon for 128 yards. He hits flanker Willie Boyer for 29 yards early in the fourth quarter to move MSU deep into Southern Cal territory. That sets up a 40-yard field goal by freshman John Langlow 
to stretch the MSU lead to 17 to 10. With the game tied at 17 on a third and eight from the MSU 30, Bobby McAllister and Andre Risen team up for the play of the game and one of the most memorable plays in Rose Bowl history. When the drive stalls, Langlo comes in to boot a 36-yard field goal, giving the Spartans a 20-17 lead with less than five minutes left. The intensity of the game can be felt up and down the sidelines. Southern Cal comes right back with Pete passing and running the Trojans down to the MSU 30 with under two minutes to go. But there's a fumble on the snap. Safety Todd Crumb falls on it for the Spartans. Sophomore linebacker Percy Snow is all over the field throughout the game, leading MSU in tackles. The native of Canton, Ohio is named player of the game, the first defensive player in three years to win the award, and one of only three defensive players to receive the honor since 1968. Southern Cal gets the ball back one final time, but with no timeouts, their last chance for victory goes awry as John Miller comes up with his second interception of the game to tie a Rose Bowl record. That seals the 20-17 victory and gives Michigan State its first win in the Rose Bowl in 32 years and also snaps the Big Ten six-game losing streak in the New Year's Day Classic. After the game, you could feel the pure emotion in the locker room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Woo! Woo! Go right through for MSU. Watch the boys keep going. Congratulations on the conference. Hey, take, congratulations on the Big Ten champs. You guys played a hell of a football game. It was tough. They're a good football team. We can't say anything but good things about them. But today, you did it. It doesn't matter if you win by one point, three points, 30 points, 100 points. A victory is a victory. Yeah! You take them one at a time. They all caught one. This will be one great, great, great big one. The next one up is Rutgers. <laughs> On September 25, 1987, friends of Michigan State and college football fans everywhere were saddened by the passing of one of the greatest Spartans of all time, Hugh Duffy Doherty. For 19 years as head coach, Duffy's contributions to Spartan football were significant. 109 victories, two national championships, and 33 All-America players. Go right through for MSU, watch the points keep growing, Spartan teams are bound to win, they're fighting with the vim, Ra ra ra. see their line is weakening, we're gonna win this game, fight, fight, fight team, fight, victory for MSU. <laughs> Thank you. 